so sorry. Okay. Thank you, everybody, for attending today's webinar, Big Data and Power BI. My name is Kevin Aguano. I will be your host for today. This is the uh, one in a series of webinars we run roughly every two weeks throughout the year. I ask you to keep your eye out wherever you found out about this webinar. You'll be able to find out about some of the others and sign up for them as well. Our presenter today is Danielle Papillon. Um, Danielle, take it away. Thank you very much, Kevin, and welcome everybody. Today's presentation, as Kevin mentioned, is Big Data and Power BI. So firstly, let's talk about big data. Have you ever wondered how much data it generates in the form of text, phone calls, emails, photos, videos, searches, and music? Approximately 400 exabytes of data gets generated every month by a single smartphone user. Now let's multiply that by 5 billion smartphone users. That's a lot for our mind to even process, right? Isn't it the fact that this amount of data is quite a lot for traditional computing systems to handle? And this massive amount of data is what we term as big data. Now, did I mention that this is per minute? So let's have a look at the data generated per minute on the internet. 2.1 million snaps are shared on Snapchat. 3.8 million search queries are made on Google. 1 million people log on to Facebook. 4.5 million videos are watched on YouTube. 188 million emails are sent. That's a lot of data. And yes, once again, did I mention that this is per minute? So how do we classify data as big data? This is possible with the concept of the five Bs, which are volume, velocity, variety, velocity, and value. So I'm going to use the example of the healthcare industry. So thinking of all the healthcare industry, hospitals, and clinics across the world, they generate massive volumes of data. 2,314 exabytes of data are collected annually in the form of patient records and test results. All this data is generated at a very high speed, which attributes to the velocity of big data. Variety refers to the various data types, such as structured data, which I look at it as things like Excel, it's very structured, semi-structured, for example, such as log files, and unstructured data, which would be like images, x-ray images. Accuracy and trustworthiness of the generated data is termed as veracity. Analyzing all this data will benefit the medical sector by enabling faster disease detection, better treatment, and reduce cost. This is known as the value of big data. But how do we store and process this big data? To do this job, we have various frameworks such as Cassandra, Hadoop, and Spark. So let's take Hadoop as an example. Hadoop stores and processes big data. It uses a distributed file system known as Hadoop distributed file system to store big data. If you have a huge file, your file will be broken down into smaller chunks and stored in various machines. When it breaks the file, it also makes copies of which then goes into different nodes. This way the data is, dis is distributed into three machines and, one mach and if one machine fails, your data is safe on the other machines. So now what do we do? 
Well, now that we have stored and processed our big data, we can analyze this data for numerous applications. So let's take, for example, the games Halo 3 and Call of Duty. These designers analyze user data to understand at which state, stage sorry, most of these users pause, restart, or quit playing. This insight can help them rework on the storyline of the game and improve the user experience, which in turn reduces the customer churn rate. Now, there's a lot of negative hype around the term big data as well. And this is very unfortunate because big data is an extremely important tool by which society is going to advance. Fundamentally, big data is important when you think about it. The only way this planet is going to deal with this global challenges, to feed people, supply them with medical care, supply them with energy, electricity, and to make sure they're not burnt to a crisp because of global warming. Not so long ago, if someone wanted to know where Jacques Cartier was located at a specific point in time, one would have to follow him at all times, maybe with a feathery quill and an inkwit and record it. But now think about today, somewhere in the telecommunications carriers databases, there is a database entry that records your information of where you, where you are and where you have been at all times. As they say, times have changed. Predictability, well, now think for example of the issue of um, the way you sit. For example, your posture. Now, just think of right now, we are all sitting differently. The functions of our legs, the length of them, the back, the contour of our back, and let's pretend I were to put sensors behind, maybe a hundred sensors behind your back, your chair. Now I could create an index that's fairly unique to you, sort of like a fingerprint. So what is done with this kind of data? Researchers, for example, in Tokyo are using it as potential anti-theft device in cars. The idea that the carjacker sits behind the wheel tries to stream off, but the car recognizes that a non-approved driver that is behind the wheel, and maybe the engine will stop unless you type in a password into the dashboard to say, hey, I have authorization to drive. With this kind of big data, we're at the point of perhaps to aggregate the data, and maybe we could identify telltale signs that best predict that car accidents is going to take place in the next five seconds. So when the car senses the driving, the driver slumping into the position, automatically there will be a vibration from the steering wheel to wake him up. So the value of big data is that more information you have, the more impressive things we can do, things that we couldn't do before. One of the most impressive areas uh, where this concept is taking place is in the area of machine learning. Machine learning is a branch of artificial intelligence, which itself is a branch of computer science. The general idea is that instead of instructing a computer of what to do, we're going to simply throw data at the problem and tell the computer to figure it out. Machine learning is at the basis of many of the things that we do online. Search, for example, Amazon personalization, algorithms, computer translations, voice recognition systems. Researchers recently have just looked at the question of cancerous biopsies, and they've asked the computer to identify by looking at the data and survival rates to determine whether cells are actually cancerous. The machine was able to identify 12 telltale signs. The medical environment were only aware of nine. Isn't that amazing? Now there is a dark side to all of this, right? 
Um, so the dark side is, yes, of course, big data will improve our lives. But there are problems that we need to be conscious of. And the first one is the idea that we may have, we may be punished for predictions that the, for example, that the police may use big data for their purpose. A little bit like the minority report. Remember that movie? The term is called predictive policing or algorithmic criminology. So let's talk about you. How can business benefit from big data, your business? Well, there is things to consider. Firstly, data-driven decision-making. Big data allows you to make information decisions based on comprehensive and accurate information. By analyzing large data sets, you can gain valuable insights into customer behavior, market trends, and operational efficiencies, enabling you to make data-driven decisions that lead to better outcomes. Improve customer understanding. With big data analytics, you can gain a deeper understanding of your customers by analyzing customer data, such as demographics, purchasing behavior, and browsing patterns. You can identify customer preferences personalize marketing campaigns, improve customer segmentation, and enhance customer satisfaction and loyalty. Enhance operational efficiency. Big data analytics can help you optimize your business operations by analyzing operational data. You can identify bottlenecks, streamline processes, and reduce costs. For example, analyzing supply chain data can help you optimize inventory levels, improve demand focusing, uh, sorry, improve demand uh, forecasting and reduce wastage, right? Advanced risk management. <clears throat> Big data analytics enables you to identify and mitigate risks more effectively by analyzing historical and real-time data. You can detect patterns, predict potential risks, and de develop proactive risk management strategies. This applies to various areas, such as fraud detection, cybersecurity, compliance, and insurance underwriting. Product and service innovation. Big data can inspire product and service innovation by analyzing customer feedback, the market trends, and competitive intelligence. You can identify unmet needs, spot emerging trends, and develop new products or enhance insisting, existing ones. Big data can also facilitate rapid prototyping, testing, and iterative development processes. Marketing and sales optimization. Big data analytics can improve your marketing and sales efforts. By analyzing customer data, you can segment your target audience, personalize marketing messages, optimize pricing strategies, and identify the most effective marketing channels. Big data can also help you track and analyze sales performance, identify cross-selling and upselling opportunities, and optimize your sales processes. Predictive analytics. Big data enables predictive analytics, which can help you anticipate future trends and outcomes by leveraging historical and real-time data. You can build predictive models to forecast demand, customer behavior, and market trends. This can inform your strategic planning resource allocation and risk mitigation strategies. Competitive edge, competitive advantage. Effectively, ut utilizing big data can provide a competitive advantage 
by leveraging data-driven insights. You can make more informed decisions, respond faster to market changes, and create unique value propositions. Big data can also help you identify market gaps and potential niches, giving you an edge over competition. So how do we do all of this? All of this can be done by you and your organization. Power BI enables everybody at every level of your organization to find, to find and share meaningful insights on the web and on the go with your mobile reporting. With hundreds of data visualizations, built-in no-code AI capabilities, and rich integration across Excel and over 400 other connectors. Power BI empowers you, your team, to discover insights hidden in, hidden in their data. Power BI allows you to create amazing data experiences by inspiring everyone to do more with their data by creating reports with drag and drop simplicity. You can scale to meet the most demand BI requires and entrust your data with the compliant, secure, and governed platforms. Power BI enables everyone to bring insights into their everyday work by automating manual processes and activating siloed data. Examples of this could be customer churn analysis, product sales data analysis, marketing campaign insights analysis, financial performance analysis, healthcare sales analysis, anomaly detention in credit card transactions, auto ML cash flow optimization for insurance company. So it is the interface is user-friendly, simple to use. What you need is your data. Transform it into Power BI, where you get so many visuals and it, keeps, and it helps you to make real life decisions. Not only just you, but you and your team. Therefore, on my next podcast, I will be introducing to you Power BI and show you how it is used. I thank you for attending Big Data. And there is time for questions and comments. Would anyone have questions or comments? Thank you very much, Danielle. So uh, people attending the call, please type your questions or comments in the chat window or the web inter uh, on the web interface. It may, you may see it as a tab called uh, or button called questions or chat. Just type your comments in there. Uh, while, we're waiting for, uh, while we're waiting for you to type in those uh, comments and questions, I just want to remind you that we do have webinars coming up every two months, or, or sorry, every two weeks roughly throughout the year although sometimes they come even more often. As a matter of fact, we had one, for example, yesterday. Uh, so just as a, an example of extra ones that we throw in in addition to our regularly scheduled uh, uh, webinars. So please keep an eye out for the webinars and see if there's something that you may find useful. Uh, we have them on topics of leadership, change management, project management, big data, and lots of other interesting topics. So again, please keep your eye out for uh, for options of uh, webinars uh, that are free that may be of interest to you. Okay, so again, type your questions in the chat window or, or comments. We have one comment that came in from Nadir. Nadir said, I had no idea there was so much data out there. These numbers are astronomical. I agree. It's like, it's like impossible to imagine that there's so much. Everything is database nowadays. Everything we do is database. Excellent. Okay, again, I remind you, enter your questions.
questions into the chat window or the web interface. Uh, somebody asked, can we get a copy of the slides? The answer is not exactly. What we do is we record this presentation. It will be posted on YouTube within 48 hours. Uh, so you'll be able to uh, watch it again as a video on YouTube and get access to the uh, the material there. If you didn't get a chance to take notes, that's how you can uh, how you can uh, access the material. Uh, we generally do not share the slides uh, directly. Another thing, Kevin, that I just wanted to remind everyone is that my next podcast will be strictly on how to use Power BI. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, there was another question. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce your name. Is Shanira? Shanira, I'm guessing, uh, asked, uh, is Power BI a tool that we buy? Is it free? What is this Power BI? So Power BI uh, at the moment is free. Uh, you need to have either a school account or a work account. And uh, once you go into Microsoft Office, um, you just type in Power BI and you will get a link to download. That's going to be Power BI Desktop. There's also Power BI on, on the cloud. Um, either one will be available to you. So Power BI is part of a, of a Power Platform. There are four different types shall we say, of, of powers. And Power BI is the first of the four. Okay, excellent, thank you. Another comment, Farhad says, great presentation, learned a lot. Kenneth says, great job. So you're getting some, uh, some kudos here. Awesome, thank you so much, I really appreciate that. Okay, uh, somebody, no, no, the answer, I already answered that question, sorry, yes, no, we will not be sending out the slides. Okay, um, is it Chanella or Chanella? Probably Chanella. I'm thinking it's Chanella, uh, said, um, uh, let me, sorry, I'm distracted here. There's a couple windows popping up. <laughs> uh, does Google provide data analysis tools? I guess, yes, they mean, I guess they mean big data analysis tools. Yes, it does. Uh, yes, I used to use them uh, uh, a long time ago. Um, they do provide, particularly uh, the one, the tool that I used to use with Google, was uh, when I had an active website is the analysis of the wits of the website but yes they do okay excellent uh, any more questions comments this is your last chance just type them into the chat window uh, while I'm giving you that one last chance I just want to remind you our next webinar is next week on June 7th 2023 creativity and innovation and in project management there's another one there's two on june 14th uh one during the day at noon eastern time making the leap to leadership leveraging eight sources of personal power and danielle returns with part two of this presentation power bi overview for new users and that will come on at 8 p.m eastern time and i do want to remind everybody on june 28th is our pmo summit event. It's a free online conference. Anybody interested in project management offices and running projects uh, is welcome to attend the event. You can find out details at pmosummit.ca. That's p-m-o-s-u-m-m-i-t dot c-a. And that's a free event uh, on June 28th. And it'll be online. Okay, uh, Danielle, I see no new questions. So, Thank you very much. You did a great job. I uh, I learned a lot. I enjoyed it. Uh, great graphics as well. Uh, it seems like oh, a lot great. of your audience members appreciated it as well. So thank you very much, Danielle. It's been my pleasure and wishing everybody uh, a good evening. Thank you great. so much. Thank See you too. You in, see you in two weeks. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Goodbye, everybody.